Amen, amen, and amen again. Grace and peace be unto you from God the Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I am Elder Travis Craig of the Greater Royal Worship Center coming to you with tonight's Sunday School lesson, our Bible study, our walk in the Word, our portion of our daily bread, or as some might say, our Monday night manna from heaven. Amen. And tonight's uh, Sunday school lesson, it is our lesson for this coming Sunday, which I believe is the uh, 28th. I believe it's the 28th. If I'm not, let me, let me just double check. Yes, indeed. Sunday, January 28th. And again, we, we follow the uh, Bible Expositor, excuse me, we follow the Union Gospel Press Sunday School Curriculum. And I teach from the Bible Expositor and Illuminator, along with the English uh Standard version of the Bible along with the King James version of the Bible and study lessons. So, again, let me go to the intro as I connect my pages and I will see you on the other side. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace unto you. Again, God bless you. Mother Blackwell, we see you. God bless you, my babe, my boo, my wife. All right, Sister Sonia. I see you, baby. We thank you for continuing to follow us. Uh, God bless you, Mother Wilson. We see you. Again, I'm Elder Travis Craig of the Greater Royal Worship Center. I've been on a, a, a mini hiatus, I guess, if you will, and this is truly our first Bible study, Sunday school lesson of the of the new year for myself, so let me uh, start by wishing everyone a happy new year. I know we're a few weeks into the, into the new year, but, you know, good things are worth waiting for, and every now and then, as Jesus said, we got to go apart and, um, you know, get into our 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 um, worship of Him. We have to go and uh, truly seek His guidance, because as Apostle said on yesterday in the service that uh, you know, truly, you know, the enemy can make you feel as if you're not wanted nor needed. Amen. God bless you, my sister, Evangelist Elder uh, Evangelist Tara Craig. Blessings unto you. All right, let's get into this lesson. Let, let's let's just dive right in. Uh, and it's a great lesson: God honoring families. It teaches us uh, um, about what it is we, as God honoring, God fearing, God believing Christians. How we ought to uh, treat one another in reverence of God. And it comes to us from the uh, book or the epistle, uh, the letter of Paul to the churches in Ephesus. And, you know, we say churches in Ephesus, they, that kind of makes it feel uh, uh, di uh, kind of distant. But what it is, is Paul's letter to the believer. Now, and I want us to take that to heart. This is Paul writing to the believer, to them that says, I believe Jesus is Lord. To them that says, I believe God raised him on the third day. I, I believe that the sacrifices he did on Calvary's cross, he did for me. That this is Paul writing to the believers. And it comes to us from Ephesians, the fifth chapter. The 21st verse to the 6th chapter and the 4th verse. And I'm going to read from the K 
King James Version. Amen. Blessings, Mother Wilson. She said you are wanted and needed. Amen. Blessings, blessings. I appreciate that. And bless God for you. Amen. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, beginning at the 21st verse. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, let, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so, love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition, uh, excuse me, and admonition of the Lord. Amen. So reads the word of our Lord. Amen. Let us pray and we'll dive right into these scriptures. Father God, it's once again with reverence and with praise in our hearts and thanksgiving in our hearts, Father that we come into your throne of grace asking Lord that as we prepare and study your word that you open up our minds and give us fresh revelation Father give us fleshly walls of compassion upon our hearts O Lord let us see what it is that you will say to us through your word in the mighty name of Jesus Amen Amen and Amen Amen, Mother Blackwell. She says, welcome back, Elder. We miss you. And Sister Craig, amen. And we well, we also missed being on. You know, um, I have, again, I, I, I really don't have a great excuse other than um, uh, the enemy playing with my mind. Not that I was not studying. I just, I, I, I just, you know, had to get past getting online and on, on live, even as Apostle said on yesterday. And, you know, I, I, I don't know, God, God gave him that message and and it, it hit something. It, home, it hit home for me. You know, he was stepping all on my toes when he talked about, you know, having doubt in your mind. You know, sometimes for no reason, you just, you just feel uh, I, I might not be worthy enough to give the word, to share my knowledge with, with other folks. You know, who am I? Well, as the apostle said, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the king. And sometimes we just have to take a moment. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my brother, from another mother. Pastor Fogum. 
God bless you, sir. Amen. Um, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verses 21 through the sixth chapter, verse 4. Honoring or God honoring families. Let me read some of this introduction and aim for today because this is actually a great lesson because in this lesson we hear that that scripture that's often quoted out of context and, and often given for uh, uh, deceitful means wives obey your husbands yeah 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 y'all yeah, yeah. Yeah, know that one all right all right but well, we gonna we gonna get to that it says here today's aim uh, the fact is to determine what God has said about the correct behavior and attitude of each family member. Our principle is to see that a family that does things according to God's wise design will have more satisfaction and blessing than those who do not. And the application is to see where we have been living and reacting badly in our family's experience and to begin living God's way. Amen. And, and that's how we ought to be living God's way. If we do it according to God's plan, mm, we will we'll have success. Um, and I'm going to read some of this from the English Standard Version beginning at verse 21. And I like the way they start at verse 21. Um, it says here, oh, I'm I don't have my page marked here in my Bible to the right one, but let me just turn a couple pages to chapter 5. Five and twenty-one. It reads, submitting to one another out of reverence to Christ. And I like the way that that's worded in the English Standard Version as opposed to uh, one another in the fear of God. Why? Because far too many hear the word fear of God and, and immediately think of something terrifying like, uh, you know, some, some horror, horror film or something. But no, the fear of God is a holy reverence, a holy respect, a holy awe of his power and awesome glory. So, so we start by submitting ourselves one uh, to another in the reverence of God. See, now when you put God in the mix, that, 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 that removes any uh, 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 impurity, any um, iniquity, any foul thought that we might have. So, so now we go from there to verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Now, you know, uh, uh, we live in a culture now that when we hear the word submit, you know, we, we have a, 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 we've been conditioned to believe that when we say submit, we're saying, uh, uh, quote unquote, be enslaved, quote unquote, do as whatever they say you must do. Not the case. All right. Let me see what's going on here. God bless you, Missionary Angie. God bless you, Sister Shaniqua. Amen. Um, it, it says, uh, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. And I want us to get the wording here. Let me read it from the, the English Standard Version. It says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Now, it don't say women submit to man. It don't say women submit or, or submit to any man. It uses the specific language wives. Why? Because marriage is an institution ordained by God. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband. And it's not a submit as in uh, be obedient as a child to a parent. No, it's a, it's a holy reverence in the order in which God has ordained things to, to, to go. And submitting only means that in the marriage, uh, um, in the marriage arrangement, let me just say that for lack of a better word right now, that, that the, the man is the head. Why? Because the man is the provider. The man is the protector. 
And the Bible even lets us know that the woman, the female, is the weaker vessel. Now, I know we can all, we can all, we all know some woman that can beat up some man. Yep, okay. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna say, yep, it, it happens. But in the grand scheme of God's plan, the man was meant to be the provider. And we have to look at the time in which Paul is writing. We're, we're truly in society at that time. Uh, 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 it, it was a time of hard labor and, uh, and hard physicality. And, and most of the work that was done were, were, was done by men. That's why the man was the protector and provider. The woman was the nurturer of the children and, and the, 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 the um, uh, keeper of the, the household, if you will. Amen. And, and now, that being said, that, do, that, that does not take, well, that is not for us to take into account that the woman in today's society might make more money than the man. The woman in today's society might be more educated than the man. And that's fine and dandy. But in the marital order of God, the man that you chose, the man that you said I do to, the man that you said I will spend the, my life with, according to the plan of God, God said, well, he is the head. He is the head. He's in charge. Now, we understand that that, you know, again, that does not mean whatever he says goes. That does not mean that uh, it's a one-track mind and, and whatever he says you must do. Because why? Uh, uh, the Bible also lets us to know that if, if he's telling you to do something that's out of God's order, as the disciples said when they told them to, t to stop preaching, uh, they said, uh, I, I'd rather... Uh, um, uh, uh, follow God's order than man's order, you know, and I'm paraphrasing that, but, but that's so, so too should the woman, if a man is telling her or, or leading her in a direction that's contra, that's, uh, contradictory to the will of God. Amen. Amen. Let me just read some of these. <laughs> Pastor Fogum says, uh, Elder, I'm going to tell my wife you said she has to listen to me. Is that what you're saying? No, 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 my pastor, my brother. That's what God is saying, okay? All right, now, hey, don't blame it on me. Let's, let's blame it on the scripture. Amen. But again, if a man is leading a woman contrary to the word of God, even the Bible says, follow God, not man, not man's law. Amen. Let, let, me, let me continue to move on here. Um, amen. Hey, uh, let's see. Verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of of the body. Again, Paul here is writing to believers. And let me, you know, you know what? Let, let's back up so we can get a better context of, of where Paul is writing from. When we back up to chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, Paul kind of puts everything in perspective. And, and it says here, um, Paul, an apostle by the will of God to the saints in Ephesus and our faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord. Wait a minute. I think I might have... All right, let me read that in... Uh, let me get my King James Version. Because Paul lets them know why he's writing. Because he's writing to, to teach them how to walk this Christian walk. And, and this, this letter or this epistle that Paul is writing to the uh, church in Ephesus, Paul is in jail in Rome. And, and we can find that in Acts chapter 28. Paul is writing this letter 
uh, from jail and yet still telling uh, the Ephesian church. Now we have to understand this Ephesian church was a church mixed of Gentiles and converted Jews. So, so there was a, a, a great mixture and Paul is trying to teach all of them. Uh, number one, to accept one another as God accepts them all. And Paul says here, Uh, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. He's, he's, he's writing to the believers. So, so, so if you're not a believer, if you have not yet accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, you know, um, the principles should apply to you, but you might not accept them. In verse 2, it just says, grace and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul, again, is, is stating, I'm writing to the believers. Uh, um, and in his writings, he's, he's teaching them how to live amongst one another and how to live for God. Uh, Apostle said uh, yesterday, uh, uh, how do we do this? By, by keeping ourselves uh, in the face of God. What that mean? Go down on Nebone Valley. Uh, meditate on your word, on your scriptures. You know, always uh, having your mind uh, on on the works of Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and as we continue on, it says here, therefore, verse twenty-four. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And uh, when we, <coughs> excuse me, as I started and said, we, we always hear of verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. And, and many take it out of context, you know, Woman, submit yourself unto the man. You know, that ain't what the scripture says. Uh, and they try to um, make a woman subservient to a man, you know. But they but they never go as far as to go to verse 23 and 24, uh, where it says, man, you know, husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. <coughs> um, and let me read verse 25. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, I'm going to read it from the English Standard Version Verse 25 Says <clears throat> Husband Love your wives as Christ loved the church And gave himself up for her Now th That's That's a, 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 a love Unto death a, a love unto death. Let me read what it says in my, my study Bible here on verse 25. <coughs> it says here. Oh. It's in my, my Schofield study Bible. It says here. Christ's love work for the church is threefold. Past, present, and future. For he gave himself to redeem the church. In love, he is sanctifying the church. And for the new, excuse me, and for the reward of his sacrifice and labor of love, he will present the church to himself in flawless perfection, one pearl of a great price. Again, if husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church, the church is the body of Christ. And, and, and we ought to all love our bodies, which means we ought to place uh, uh, an extraordinary love to our wives. And if we, we as husbands are loving our wives in that manner, for them to be 
to submit unto us. See, that, that's pleasing to God. Why? Because that falls in this order. Because it's actually not a woman or a wife submit to your husband, but it's actually a submitting unto one another. Husband is submitting to the wife by protecting, by caring, by, by uh, um, uh, 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 preparing, by, by keeping, you know. So he is providing for the wife in a loving manner, you know, that, that, that the two of them might prosper together. Amen. Verse 26, it says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. And again, the washing of water by the word means if we're going to do it God's way, we're first and foremost honoring God. And by submitting to one another, God is, takes pleasure in that. Why? Because that's the formula that he gave us in order to be prosperous, in order to have a, a prosperous uh, relationship uh, here on earth. You know, because we all talk about how it's going to be better in glory. But but the Bible lets us to know we can, we can have heaven on earth if we do it God's way. Amen. And... and Oh, let, let me say this because I'm also I'm recording for on Facebook Live now, but I'm also recording for YouTube. So if it seems like I'm not looking directly at the cameras because I have a Facebook camera here and a YouTube camera just slightly above it. So, um, you know, uh, so, yeah, I, I, I'm not cross eyed or nothing like that. Just, you know, I'm just I'm just looking, trying to look between both cameras um, and in an effort to address everyone. Amen. Amen. It says here, verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. And it's the word that cleanses us, y'all. It's the word that is the truth, y'all. And Jesus says, you know, it, it, that, that uh, he is the word. He is the truth. So if we're honoring one another, and husbands, this to us, if, if, if we're honoring our wife or loving our wife as Christ loved the church, that means we ought to be godly. That means we ought to be following in Christ's uh, steps. That means we ought to be trying to have a mind like Christ each and every day. Mm. And if we do that, you know, we'll find ourselves prosperous. Verse 27, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot nor wrinkle or anything, but that it should be holy and without blemish. And again, it just speaks to walking in the right direction, serving a holy God, letting our actions be of holiness, of righteousness, walking in Christ's footsteps. Amen. Amen. Um, verse 28, So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. And again, if we're going to love our wives as Christ loved the church, Christ loved the church unto death uh, unto his sacrifice as the Lamb of God that the church might be better that the children of God um, the sheep of his pasture might again be accepted into the fold might again be, be adopted into the family this is how we as husbands are to love our wives and I, and I like because I, I got to go back here it, is, it says, uh, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Husbands, um, 
love your wives even as Christ also loved the church. The fact that the Bible says, wives submit yourselves unto your own husband, stands to reason that when it says, husband, love your wives, it, it's talking, husband, love your wife, okay? Let, let, let's not get it twisted. Not your, not your wife, your bae, your boo, and your side piece. No, it is husband, love your wife. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband. Mm. Your own husband. See, see, that's letting us to know that that th th that this is an exclusive, <laughs> uh, an exclusive uh, relationship, an exclusive union under God. That we might be become prosperous and 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 uh, pleasing in God's sight. So men ought to love their wives, verse 28, as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife love himself. And, you know, and that just goes to speak to those that try to keep themselves happy or we that try to keep ourselves, I'm sorry, not happy, but, but, but um, spiritually and physically uh, um, able if you will now because if we love ourselves we're going to feed ourselves not only the natural but the spiritual and we're going to we're going to try to stay make sure we stay centered in god's will that we might be able to lead others i mean if we're going to be a leader if we're going to be a, a husband according to god's will you know we have to spend time in his presence that we might be able to lead our wives uh, spiritually, naturally, and, and, and listen, um, I'm not saying that there ought not to be conversations between husbands and wives as to what direction that, that you want to take the family in, or let me say, which godly direction you want the family to go in you know whether it be uh some th something economical uh, uh something uh spiritual something you know you might want to move to a different city you know these these are conversations that we have but now if we respect one another you know and and, and we put things lay things on the table yeah you know um the man is the, the, the head, if you will. But that don't mean uh, because he say, you know, I woke up this morning and feel I need to move. Uh, we need to move cross country. Let's go. No, 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 no. Because again, it's not a submitting as as a child is submitting, uh, submitting to a parent in obedience. That, that's not what we're talking here. We're talking a reverence of one another. Amen. Amen. Blessing, Sister Sheltina. We see you. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> verse 29. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. And, and it's just a ref, uh, reference again to how Christ loved the church. And this is, Paul is giving these this uh, uh, um, instruction to again, a Gentile church in Ephesus, <clears throat> new believers, and how they can live prosperous lives, how they can uh, um, uh, be prosperous amongst one another, how they are to treat one another. And, not, and this not only goes for, uh, um, uh, the reverence part not only goes for husband and wives, but also from believer to believer. You know, uh, we, we can't say, the Bible says, we can't say we love God, but we hate our brother. You know, um, be, why? Because that's not God-like. Um, so, so how can we, as the Bible say, how can we say we love God whom we never seen, but say we hate our brother whom we see every day? Mm, my God. So Paul, again, is teaching from jail 
that this is how we 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 uh, fur make furtherance of the gospel. Number one, not only by uh, teaching the word, but by living it out, but by showing by example. It's not only a do as I say, but do as I do. Fo uh, as, as Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Yeah, meaning if 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 my walk gets funny. If I start to stray to the left or the right, no, no, don't follow me. Continue following Christ, you know, because man has no hell, no heaven that he can put you in. But if you stay centered in Christ's will, stay, stay squarely on the path of righteousness, you too shall have a crown in glory. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Again, it's an intimate relationship between the believer and our Savior. Uh, uh, by, by accepting him as Lord and Savior, the, the, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, it, it, the Bible says it quickeneth or it awakens in us. Mm. And we've all been given the measure of faith. Mm. It, it, it's how we nurture it, which, which will determine how much we can grow from it or, or grow it into, what we can blossom it into. Um, and, and that's why, you know, no, no matter where you are in life, we've all been given the measure of faith. You know, it, it's not one person got more of it and another person got less of it. No, we've all been given the same measure, but it's on how we nurture it, how we feed the spirit man, how we interact with God, how we treat one another, which, which decides how, 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 the, how the spirit in us will mature. How the spirit in us will grow uh, uh, if we're doing all that we can for God. All that we can and, and trying to do even the more. God will allow us or bless us that, that we might grow in faith and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. He says here, in verse 31, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. Okay, now, Paul is teaching that, that when you take a wife, when well, the Bible says, he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and the favor of God. Paul is teaching, when you take a wife, you, you, you're you now taking on, a, 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 as God took the rib from Adam and, and created Eve, you, you're taking on uh, the one that walketh with you, the one that, that that's, uh, not that not that walks behind you, but walks beside you, a uh, help meet. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. With, with God ordained this thing and, and God says, I'm pleased with that. I'm pleased with that. You're, you're now, God now looks at the family unit as one. Oh my God. It says here, this, this is the, a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. And again, Paul is making the analogy that the, the marriage, the union between a man and a woman, it is like the union between Christ and his church. Christ who is the head of the church and we the believers who are the body of the of the church mm. we're, we're we're many members but one body come on now and we all have a different job to do but it, 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 no one job is more important than the other why because the eye can't say uh because i'm not the ear and can't hear you yeah, I'm, I'm of no good to you the, the foot can't say because i'm not the hand and, and, and can't grab you know I, you don't need me no we, we need every member of the body is of importance mm. all right all right 
Paul here is again teaching this, this new church, these new believers. This is how you find unity in the body. This is how, and I'm talking the body of believers. This is how you find unity amongst one another. This is how you live peaceably among all men. Amen. 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 So Paul is simply trying to show the, 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 the believers. And again, Paul is talking to uh, the church in Ephesus. And at the time, Ephesus was a great city. It was a, a, a seaport city where people from all uh, um, nationalities converged upon. And it was a city that believed in magic. It was a city with with uh, um, uh, 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 heathen temples. I, I believe the temple of Diana was there in Ephesus. Um, I can't can't call any others off offhand, but there, there it was a city of many religions, uh, a city that believed in many gods in its day. And Paul is saying, but the God. God Almighty, this is what he has chosen. Uh, I mean, this is what he has ordained for you as believers to do. And again, that's why I said, he said, I'm talking to the believers. So, so if you have some other other belief, you know, don't come and, and um, con try and confuse God's children. This is to the believers. Amen. Now that being said, that don't mean don't 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 give somebody a word, you know, because all we're we're told to 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 um spread the gospel, and all we can do is give them the word and let the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, uh, convict them. The Holy Spirit convert them. The Holy Spirit will will convict them to 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 confess, convict convict them to repent. Convict them to accept Jesus as Lord. We again, we cannot condemn anyone. All we can do is do what God has ordained us to do. And, and uh, Matthew uh, twenty-eight and twenty, or uh, twenty-eight uh, and eighteen through twenty, to to go out and spread the gospel in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Ah, uh, let's see. Amen. All right, we're looking good on time here. Uh, verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. I mean, it, it's so plain and so clear, yet people will twist these scriptures here. I mean, because I know if you like me, you, you always, you, you mostly hear um, between this section of scripture is wives submit to your husbands. Wives submit to your husband. That, that's the main thing we always hear. But, but, but we hardly hear. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular lo so love his wife even as himself. It, come on. No, when you read this, this portion of scripture in its totality, there is no way you can take from it that the woman should be subservient to the man. No, it's a holy reverence, a reverence of one another and, and the, and the uh, uh, reverence to God. And God looks down on that and, and he has pleasure in it. It pleases God that by doing that, we're honoring God. Mm. See, th th this is why this is a God honoring families. Th this is how the family unit itself, itself honors God. So I know, you know, I remember back in the day when, uh, when I was coming up, you know, where Church wasn't, uh, you know, if you want to go, you go. No, church was, if you're under this roof, <laughs> uh, come Sunday, 
you in church. You, if mama and daddy didn't go, guess what? Y'all kids get y'all going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, it, it wasn't a, uh, I, I stayed out late last night. I'm, I'm going to sleep in late. No, you're not. Oh, oh, my stomach don't hurt. I, I can't, my stomach hurt. I can't go to church. Okay. Well, after church, you can't go outside and play neither because your stomach hurt. You know, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't a choice. It was a, it was a, 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 a rule of the house. Yeah. Everybody going to church on Sunday. And if somebody came to visit, guess what? When the household went to church, they either went to church with them or went home. Because <laughs> they wasn't, they, 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 they was not going to stay at the house when the family was going to church. My God. <laughs> Amen. It says here, verse 33. Nope, let me go. Chapter 6, verse 1. Now we go from the husband and wives, how they should treat one another, to how the children should be treated and uh, how the parents should uh, respect their children. And, and again, well, excuse me, let me read the verse because it says here, <clears throat> chapter six, verse one, children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. And then it tells us why. Honor thy father and mother which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee that thou mayest live long on the earth. That, let that sink in for a minute. <clears throat> Children, honor thy father and mother. <clears throat> we are to honor as children, honor your father and your mother. For this is the first commandment with promise. What's the promise? The promise is that you that your days may be long. And I know all of us can think of an example of a disobedient child, that that a wayward child from our past, maybe even our present, that that uh, because of what they've done, being disrespectful, being disobedient. They, they lost their lives. And, and I'm just going to be real with you. Uh, um, you know, I know I know from personal experience, you know, people, kids, you know, and I'm going to say kids, but, you know, 14 to 18, heck, even the 21. Uh, if their mind is not uh, 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 matured, they, you know, yeah, they might have a body of, of an adult, but their mind is still of a child. And they do things. And just because kids get big enough that, to, to think they can do what they want to do, don't always mean they're mature enough to do, the, to do those things. And we as parents, you know, we can't just say, okay, you're 18. I did what I had to do. I, I, <clears throat> I got you to 18. Go ahead. Be free. Get out. Bye. No, <clears throat> because parenthood is a lifetime job. Um, you're always going to be mama. You're always going to be daddy. I don't care how old the child gets. And being that we've been here on this earth longer than the child that we've brought forth means we ought to have some knowledge that we can uh, uh, share with them that might help their way be just a little easier because you know because um experience don't always come from what you've experienced you can gain experience from uh the the experiences of others and them telling you from their experience you, you ought not to do that or you ought to try it try doing it this way it might be a little easier so we have to understand that that we are to uh, uh, respect our children. Now, I'm talking to us parents now. We are, we are to respect our children. Our children are to honor us. And, and you know, I, I, I never could understand how um, some people can be 
Um, best friends with their children, and, and and let me let me quantify that. Not not that you just have a a good relationship with your child, because that's what we all aim for. But best friends, as in homies, as in girls, as in you know, we hanging out. We gonna drink this drink together. We gonna smoke this smoke together. You know, hey, what's up? You my dog? Yeah, go do what you no. Because I'm always going to be parent to my children. Um, and and I, I wouldn't even feel right uh, hanging out with my child as I did with one of my homeboys growing up. Or, or, or one of the, or hanging out with my daughters, you know, as if uh, uh, she, uh, she was a friend of mine when I was coming up. You know, I, I, I would not even feel right. In that, in that type of situation. And, and according to the word. That ought not be. Amen. Come on evangelists. Don't provoke your children. Amen. Amen. And, and, and that is. Because we going there. When you, your fathers. Verse number four. Six and four. And ye fathers. Provoke not your children to wrath. But bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And, and that that's for uh, those hard-nosed fathers that is, is you know, that want to rule with an iron fist. I, uh, I don't care what happened. It didn't, you, you didn't do it the way I, I said to do it or the way I think it should be done. You know, so there's nothing you can tell me. Uh, I don't want to hear it. No, that that that's adding strife to the relationship. That that's causing a, a child to to uh, um, be standoffish. That's that that's creating distance in the relationship. And I know they say fathers here, but let's be real. We're talking that goes for mothers too. See that that they're, they're, that's opposite ends of the spectrum. One end you can't be so cool with your kids that you're like they're they're like your girlfriends and, and your boyfriends that you hung out with back in the day, and then you can't be so strict on them that you drive them into the into the arms of the enemy. To do disobedient things because you're just so rigid and so strict. So Paul is just teaching that we ought to be um, respectful, loving, and nurturing uh, to even unto our children. Amen. 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 And that is a two-way street. Uh, yes, Sister Sheltina. Mothers do it, fathers do it, you know, um, but we have to be mindful because if we're going to be um, pleasing in the sight of God, we have to take into account his word and, and know that there is a median um, that we are to, to, to guide our children in. Um, Nope, we don't allow them to disrespect us. Nope, we don't allow them to go against the rules that we set of the house. But also, when they do something a little differently than we did, you know, if it's not against God's rules, if it's not against uh, the, our rules, which should be godly rules, um, then we should not be so rigid that we try to break their spirit or 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 beat them into submission uh, mentally or physically, uh, we ought to have a, a, there ought to be a median in which we can come to, to appreciate what one another has to offer and to give because we have to understand children are, are, are yet people and they are yet trying to find their way. And, and just because you and I may have done it one way, don't mean it's the only way. So we have to be mindful and understanding uh, when our children come to us with a a, a, a plan on how they want to do some things. You know, um, we can't just dash their dreams and hopes because it didn't work for us. We can't just 
dash their dreams and hopes because we can't imagine it being done that way. But we can too give them some wisdom. You know, I have an uncle that I remember back in the day I would I would take a business plan to him. I say, man, I think I want to do this, that, and thus and thus. And he would always hit me with, a, with, with some questions. Well, what you gonna do if this happens? How you gonna do it if that happens? Well, what if this happens? What, what, what you gonna do? And he said uh, to me, well, I, I'm just giving you some life examples that if it could go this way, you're not, you are not so rigid in your plan as if as to only have one plan of action, but you have to have a contingency for when the thing you're trying to do don't go the way that you're planning for it to go. You have to have a, a contingency to maybe take a left turn, take a right turn, veer from the, the original plan that you had and see how you can make it work as opposed to crumbling in defeat. Why? Because you didn't take a step left or a step right, but you wanted to go through a brick wall as opposed to go around it. All right, y'all. Amen, 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 amen. And I believe that will conclude, that is concluding the lesson for tonight. This, wow, this is right on time. Right on time. I, I pray we've all gotten something out of that. God honoring families. God honoring families. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, the 21st verse through the fourth, through the sixth chapter and the fourth verse. And this is how we as believers should treat one another, how husbands and wives should treat each other, and how parents should treat their their children. <clears throat> And, um, and, and even in raising them. And this is how the family unit can be prosperous and happy if we do it according to God's plan. Great things. God, God, God says we can be happy on, on this side of glory. You know, as, as, <clears throat> uh, as David said, for I believe I will, I will see, oh, as Job's, no, wait a minute. Uh, it's David, Psalm 28, Psalm 28, I'm drawing a blank, where he says, uh, uh, be of good courage. Matter of fact, let me just go there, because I'm drawing a blank. Psalm 28, I believe it's like the 14th verse or something. Psalm 27, I'm sorry. Psalm 27 <clears throat> and 13. David says, I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. That's the, from the English Standard Version. Let me read it from the King James Version because I know many of us are... <clears throat> so used to the King James Version that we don't uh, know of any other versions so or don't sound correct in, in, in any other version we got Psalm 28 uh, I keep saying 28 Psalm 27 and 13 I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. Amen. That's Psalm uh, 27, verses 13 and 14. Psalm of David. Amen. All right, y'all. All right, all right. I thank you for hanging out with me. I thank you for... Um, sharing this study time with me. I thank you for your comments that you left in the in the comment section. Um, remember, tune in tomorrow night. Uh, Pastor Fogum with the House of Prayer, Praise, and Worship in the 7 o'clock hour. 
Tune in tonight. Uh, Sister Tyra, Evangelist Tyra, is on, and I'm, I'm not sure of exactly what time because I'm I'm usually fast asleep <laughs> or or nodding on the couch or something. Uh, but tune in to Evangelist Tyra uh, this evening and every every evening she's on. I, I catch her on uh, YouTube. Um, I believe one of them is Tiny Talk Talks with Tyra. Uh, evangelist, if you're still in the in the chat room, put put it in the chat room. You, you know we got tune in, support one another, uh, because it'd be some good gems. You know some good gems that we can take and and carry along with us. And when the time is right, the Holy Spirit will bring it back to our remembrance. Amen. All right, y'all. I'm not gonna prolong the hour. Uh, let us close in prayer. Again, thank you all for your words of encouragement. Thank you all for jo joining with me. Father God, once again, we come to, a, to the end of another study, Father. And we know, Father, that your word will not return unto you void, Father, but it will hit every mark that you intended for it to hit, Father. Father, let it be a light to our feet and a lamp into our pathways, Father, that will, that will help us to walk uprightly in your spirit and in your, in your, in your word, O oh God. Father, send your angels down to touch those that have infirmity in their bodies, Father. Touch those that have that have a com that have uh, uh, troubled minds, Father, that you might still the mind that they will not be conformed into the world, but be transformed unto a mind like Christ, O God. Stir up the spirit of those, Father, that may have strayed from you, Father, and they that know you not in the pardon of their sins, Father. Touch them, Lord, that they too might ask, what must I do to be saved? In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, and amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Good night. Until the next time. May God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. Good night.